Welcome to the Skeptic Zone, the podcast from Australia for science and reason. Yes, it's the Skeptic Zone podcast, episode number 658 for the 23rd of May 2021. Richard Saunders with you from Sydney, Australia. Hairdressers. I haven't been to a hairdresser for a little while, or a barber. In fact, I'm growing my hair a little long for an upcoming part in a production, as a matter of fact. But nevertheless, if I do go to a hairdresser, I'll make sure I pick one who doesn't espouse anti-vaccination ideas. And that's our first story coming up today, anti-vaccination hairdressers in the states of Queensland and Victoria, specifically to do with COVID-19. No, this isn't a parody of the Skeptic Zone. This isn't some crazy alternative reality. There are actually people in our society who won't serve customers who've had a COVID-19 vaccination. Find out more at the top of the show. Then the Australian Skeptics newsletter compiled by Tim Mendham. Amongst the items I'll be reading out is another crazy idea about teaching children via a university, teaching children how to douse divine using pendulums and L rods. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is some sort of crazy alternative reality. Details coming up a bit later on. Following that, it's the Book of Tim with Tim Mendham. As Tim reads items from the Skeptic magazine, the journal from Australian Skeptics, this week focusing on items to do with the Scopes Monkey Trial from 1925. Then I speak to members of the Great Australian Psychic Prediction Project and find out about a friend of mine, Kelly Burke. Well, she gave a talk recently at a Skeptic camp about guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia. You can enjoy that talk via the link in this week's show notes, but find out more as I chat to my friends from the Prediction Project. To round off the show once more, we dive into the trove, the treasure trove of digitized newspapers and so on, this time from Australia. And again, we look at uh, reports at the time about the Scopes monkey trial, the, the teacher who was teaching evolution, sort of, in the classroom in Dayton, Ohio, well, just to make a point. So no matter where you are, whether you're walking the dog, whether you're out there looking for wildlife, did I hear some kookaburras earlier this morning? I'm not sure. Sometimes I do. I know certain parts of the country the kookaburras are are loud and wild indeed, looking for wildlife. It's always a nice thing to do after being snugly warm, rugged up in bed whether you're driving trucks across the great expanse of Canada. Are you are you jogging in Ireland, maybe? Are you commuting in Australia? Are you on the bus? Are you on the train? Are you in your car listening to The Skeptic Zone? No matter where you are and what you're doing, I hope you enjoy this week's episode. But now it's time for me to run downstairs. And, hmm, you know, once upon a time I had some yummy Japanese pancakes. <sighs> I don't know if I'm able to really do those justice and cook those. Maybe I'll just have some plain pancakes and pretend I'm eating lovely Japanese pancakes. Will I do that? I hope you enjoy The Skeptic Zone. One of the more surprising aspects of this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 fiasco, adventure, journey, situation, whatever word you want to use, is the level of ignorance that has been displayed in certain quarters, especially these days when the vaccine is being rolled out here in Australia. And I draw your attention to a couple of stories that have come my way in the last week or so. First one, courtesy of Nine News. And of course, there'll be a link 
in the show notes. This is at nine. That's the numeral nine news.com.au. Gold Coast Hair Salon refuses customers who have had a COVID-19 vaccine. A Gold Coast Hair Salon is refusing to treat customers who have received a COVID-19 vaccine, claiming they want to protect the, quote, health and safety, end quote, of their staff. The Kamir, and I think that's how it's pronounced, High Vibe Frequency Salon at Palm Beach posted a policy update to its social media in which the salon's team claimed that the, quote, unknown health effects of the mRNA vaccine, end quote, are not covered by its public liability insurance. The salon now requires customers to notify them if they have had the vaccine prior to making an appointment. Quote, the unknown health effects of the mRNA vaccine are not covered by a public liability insurance, end quote, the salon posted to its Facebook page and Instagram pages. The Therapeutic Goods Administration, TGA, has clearly stated all vaccines confirmed for use in Australia have been heavily regulated for safety. Quote, Australia's vaccine safety and regulatory process is world class and people can be confident that vaccines approved for use are safe and effective. End quote. Acting Australian Government Chief Medical Officer Professor Michael Kidd and Head of the Therapeutics Goods Administration Adjunct Professor John Skerritt said in a joint statement in April, quote, Our vaccines will save lives and are an essential part of tackling this global pandemic, end quote. The Kamiya team said it would reevaluate the policy, quote, when clinical trials T-R-A-I-L-S, of the experimental injection are completed in 2023, end quote. This post was flagged by Facebook as, quote, missing context, end quote, with a fact box appearing in which the social giant says, quote, independent fact checkers say that this information could mislead people, end quote. When contacted by Nine News, the salon's owner, Yasmina Adler, claims she had heard of women contracting side effects without having received a vaccine. Quote, I guess a lot of people would question that, and I think it's like anything. It's like the disease or the virus at the moment. It's spreading somehow, and somehow women are reporting side effects when they haven't got the shot. End quote. Miss Adler told Nine News. There are no verified reports that match Miss Adler's claims. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg told Today, and I think that's referring to the television morning show uh, Today on the Nine Network, that public hesitancy over the jab was understandable, but it would not derail the federal government's plan to reopen borders. Quote, it's understandable that some people are hesitant, but ultimately the more people that get the jab, the better. End quote. And there is more on that page, but I will add a link in the show notes so you can read the rest of that report for yourself. And that mindset is not only found in the state of Queensland. Here we have a report from abc.net.au, and it's by Matt Neal. And the story says, Health authorities are disheartened as hairdresser bans COVID vaccinated clients. A hairdresser in southwest Victoria has come under fire from a local health authority for saying she won't accept customers who have been vaccinated against COVID-19. Melinda Thackeray, who owns Melinda Diva's Hair and Tanning Salon near Colac, a town that endured one of the worst outbreaks of the coronavirus in regional Victoria last year, made the announcement on Facebook. Barwon Health has criticised the move, saying there is no scientific basis for a business to ban customers who have received a COVID-19 vaccine. Ms. Thackeray's Facebook post stated that she, quote, will not be taking any COVID vaccinated clients, end quote. Quote, as this is still in the experimental stage, we still don't know enough about the effects it will have on us and whether the vaccinated will shed spike proteins, end quote, she wrote. Spike proteins are small shards containing a carbohydrate, such as a sugar molecule, 
that protrude from the coronavirus cells and play a role in how the virus infects their hosts. Miss Thackeray's post announcing her stance attracted disclaimers from Facebook, which noted that, quote, COVID-19 vaccines go through many tests for safety and effectiveness and are then monitored closely, end quote. Ms. Thackeray's Facebook profile contains links to unproven COVID-19 treatments, claims COVID-19 is a scam, anti-lockdown sentiments, and a post referring to a vaccination center as a, quote, mass depopulation hub, end quote. And again, there is more to read on that story, and you can read the rest of this uh, sad case for yourself by clicking the link in this week's show notes. But honestly, folks, if you just Google uh, COVID-19 hairdresser <laughs> or hairdressers, uh, you'll find these stories. And I hate to say it, you may find even more hairdressers and others who have decided that they won't uh, have clients who have been vaccinated. Well, I know where I'm not getting my hair cut next week. For on Monday evening here in Sydney, I will be fronting up at the vaccination hub in the suburb of Homebush to get my first of two rounds of the AstraZeneca vaccine. I will be reporting about this as best I can. And yes, I do expect some negative side effects. I may feel unwell. I may have a painful arm. I may, I may get flu-like symptoms following the injection the following day, I imagine. I don't know, everybody's different, but that's part and parcel of uh, what we all should be doing. Anyway, on next week's show, I will uh, bring you that report and I will report honestly on any adverse reactions I get to the vaccine, but it won't be any surprise if I do feel a little unwell. But what did surprise me was when I found out about these reports that... uh, There are people out there fearing vaccinated people in the community and uh, won't have them in their business. Astonishing. This is Heidi Robertson from the Northern Rivers Vaccination Supporters. We are a group of concerned citizens dedicated to promoting good science and common sense in our region, the far north coast of New South Wales. This area, famous for its natural beauty and relaxed lifestyle, also has the lowest rates of vaccination in Australia. We are out to change that by challenging the myths and misinformation and by providing good evidence-based information to the community. We'd love for you, no matter where you are in the world, to join our fight. Please visit our webpage at www.nrvs.info. We also have a link there to our Facebook page. Tweet us at nrvaxsupporters, that's V-A-X, and check us out on Wikipedia by searching for Northern Rivers vaccination supporters. Thank you. Let's look at the newsletter from Australian Skeptics, Australian Skeptics newsletter number 123, 123 by Tim Mendham. And Tim says, hi all. Just when we thought COVID conspiracies and quack cures would dominate the news, along comes the University of Wollongong to save the day. Dowsing for kids. Enough said, read on. And you too can read this newsletter by going to www.skeptics.com.au, signing up for the newsletter. It will be delivered to your inbox every other week. Australian Skeptics News, University of Wollongong teaching dowsing to kids. And there's some good news in a moment. The University of Wollongong is at it again. Already notorious for its awarding a PhD 
for the appallingly anti-vax thesis by Judy Wileyman. It now has a course for kids in years three to four on dowsing as part of its early education lab workshops. The blurb goes, quote, Imagine if you could find the invisible. Well, together we will be able to find earth energies and objects we cannot see using dowsing. Dowsing is an ancient or really, really old technique used to find things that solve problems. We will be using a pendulum and some L rods to locate objects and spots of energy. <sighs> no special power is needed as the dowsing instruments respond to electromagnetic stuff we cannot see. If you'd like to be a detective, problem solving and finding things, then come and play slash learn with us. End quote. Do we see a bent spoon nomination coming on? And the good news is, since this newsletter went out a couple of days ago as of time of recording, so it went out on the 18th of May, Apparently, and due to this newsletter and concerned people contacting the university, that dowsing course has been dropped. And I, for one, am very happy to hear that. I mean, you just heard what I read out. It's just, to use the term bunk, it is bunk. And not only that, it has been long debunked bunk. Nothing has been debunked more than dowsing water divining. Over 40 years ago here in Australia, one of the biggest tests ever held of water dividing, water dowsing, or dowsing in general, showed it was bunk. I don't use the word bunk much at all, but in this case I'll use it. And if you're listening, University of Wollongong, water or any sort of dowsing or divining is bunk. It should not be taught to children as if it were real, and you claim in your blurb that no special power is needed as the dowsing instruments respond to electromagnetic stuff we cannot see. Well, if you can prove that, you get $100,000 from the Australian Skeptics and a Nobel Prize. I can't wait for you to apply. And it's particularly galling for me personally, because for almost 20 years now, with the Mystery Investigators Group Troop for Schools performance, we have been demonstrating to kids, school kids of all ages, how to test water divining in a simple, fair, random, double-blind test. And to think that a university would then go and teach these same kids that it actually works and here's how to do it is absolutely galling. Thank goodness, thank goodness, some sort of common sense has crept into that university at last and they have cancelled that course. Rant over, we read on. And amongst the other items listed here, Indian officials promote COVID misinformation. Indian politicians promoting quack cures. Cow dung, cow urine and mass steam inhalation are just some of the many suggestions during the current and worsening outbreak. Warning, yucky pick of men smeared with cow dung. Mm. And again, each of these items is accompanied by a link. Oh, by the way, that one from the University of Wollongong, when we followed the link, we were led to the PDF uh, from the university featuring all the activities for kids, including the water dowsing or divining in general, which I've kept for the archives. So if it's gone now, we still have a copy. Do herbal weight loss aids work? Researchers from the University of Sydney have undertaken what is touted as the world's first review of complementary medicines to try and find out just how effective or ineffective weight loss supplements are. They discovered an industry running largely unchecked. Between 1996 and 2006, a thousand weight loss supplements were included on the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods and were not tested for efficacy. Just 20% of new listings are checked annually to make sure they measure up, the researchers noted. Anti-maskers ready to start masking. Irony of ironies. An anti-vaccination conspiracy about the vaccinated 
is leading some anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers to contemplate wearing a mask and social distancing to protect themselves from the vaccinated. Good grief. COVID skeptics are pro-science? How did COVID-19 skeptics become such an influential force in society? A new paper that, quote, raises awkward questions, end quote, attempts to explain how they did and what scientists can do about it. But the American Council on Science and Health says the study's analysis is plagued by the same set of assumptions that caused the problem in the first place. Why UFOs will never, ever go away. A lengthy article blames bad journalism for the continuing saga of a topic that lacks definitive evidence. A good read and worth the effort. How to discuss intelligent design with skeptics. Yes, you read that right. This is a podcast offering advice to supporters of intelligent design, which is an alternative term for creationism. Using the ID term means they want it to sound more sciencey and convincing for pro-evolutionists, i.e. ungodly materialists. But it's not science despite the complaint that, quote, there is so much misinformation about the theory of intelligent design that many well-intentioned people reject not the actual theory, but a silly caricature, a straw man. They don't realize that ID is not an argument from ignorance, but an inference to the best explanation based on positive evidence for design and negative evidence against compelling materialistic explanations. End quote. It runs for 15 minutes and the podcaster has a bachelor's degree in music education and a master of science in organizational psychology, i.e. issues concerning hiring and training employees. Go figure. Panther sighting in Victoria. Latest in a string of sightings drags up some memories. This one is from near Mitamita in northeastern Victoria. An interesting side note, Mitamita is where the skeptics have held several water divining tests. None succeeded. Maybe they should turn their water and gold divining skills into finding cats. Or get the University of Wollongong to teach them how to do it. Also in the newsletter, links on subscribing to The Skeptic, the journal from Australian Skeptics, and a list of what's coming up event-wise around Australia with Skeptics in the Pub and so on from just about every state. Psychic couple claim ghosts bounce on their bed. To make matters worse, the ghosts are their respective mothers-in-law. Fortunately, the spirits don't stick around to witness any intimate moments, but they might offer helpful suggestions to the in-laws. Hey, it's a Daily Mail story, so it must be true. Psychic Barber coming to Mackay, a local promo for Australian psychic medium and barber Beck Campbell. Nothing to do with Occam's razor, we assume. And finally, man's video proof UFOs exists. We don't normally include ghost or UFO clips as they tend to be much of a muchness and pretty unconvincing. This clip is not necessarily more convincing but at least it has local interest as it was filmed near the Gold Coast in Queensland. And there is a link to that. There are more items in that newsletter but you can see those for yourself. Well, from newsletters from now on, if you go to www.skeptics.com.au and sign up for this newsletter. Thanks to Tim Mendham. Tadaima ki te itadai te iru podokiasto wa オーストラリアから雑スケプチックゾーンという科学と論理のポッドキャストです。英語は世界中で数ある言葉の一つですが、このポッドキャストはいろいろな国の言葉で紹介します。www.skepticzone.tv を調べて 
ホームページの下までにスクロールすると折り紙のピガサスという翼のあるブタを工夫したリッチャード・ソーンダスのオリジナルの折り紙のポースターをダウンロードをすることができます。And、the reading today is from a regular column called What Goes Around, which is based on the concept that you can start off with any particular fact you like and move from one fact and joins on with another fact and brings you back to where you started from, which we call that the inevitable realization that all knowledge is connected and connectable. Now, this particular one is on monkeys, evolution, law, and the wind. We start off with the monkey trial, or more properly, the state of Tennessee versus John Thomas Scopes, or just the Scopes trial, which was a famous US legal case in 1925, in which a substitute high school teacher, John Scopes, born 1900, died 1970, was accused of violating Tennessee's Butler Act, which made it unlawful to teach human evolution in any state funded school. The trial was deliberately staged in order to attract publicity. Scopes was unsure whether he had ever actually taught evolution, but he purposely incriminated himself so that the case could have a defendant. Under a different name, Scopes was portrayed in the film Inherit the Wind by Dick York. And that film came out in 1960. Now, famous American essayist H. L. Mencken, 1880 to 1956, Wrote vituperative attacks on the Scopes trial and those uncivilized yokels, and that was his word, who had brought the action. In his syndicated columns from Dayton for the Baltimore Sun, Darrow drew vivid caricatures of the backward local populace, referring to the people of Rhea County as morons, peasants, hillbillies, and yaps. Mencken saved particular criticism for prosecuting attorney Williams Jennings Bryan. Later called him a vulgar and common man, a cad undiluted. He was ignorant, bigoted, self seeking, blatant, and dishonest. Mencken was nothing if not、uh, forthright. Under a different name, Mencken was portrayed in Inherit the Wind by Gene Kelly. Now, William Jennings Bryan, 1860 to 1925, was a leading American politician from the 1890s until his death. He was a major force in the populist wing of the Democratic Party. And while he was a member of the House of Representatives and for a short time Secretary of State, he failed in his three attempts at the party's candidate for President of the US, and that was 1896, 1900, and 1908. He was a prohibitionist and an opponent of Darwinism on religious and humanitarian grounds. With his commanding voice and wide travels, he was one of the best known orators and lecturers of the era. Under a different name, Bryan was portrayed in Inherit the Wind by Frederick March. With over 500 speeches in 1896, now think of that, 500 speeches in one year, Brian was known for, for his national stumping tour, travelling from site to site, giving much the same speech in different locales, sometimes several times in one day. In his three presidential bids, he promoted the free silver movement in 1896, anti imperialism in 1900, and trust busting in 1908. In the latter, he called on Democrats to fight the trusts, which were big corporations and big banks, and embrace anti elitist ideals of republicanism. Because of his faith in the wisdom of the common people, he was nicknamed the Great Commoner. Now, another person fighting big business, and who also failed to achieve the political heights he anticipated, was lawyer Clarence Darrow, 1857 to 1938. He moved from a practice in a small farming community. To corporate law and then national prominence as a defender of underdogs. 
He ran for Congress as a Democrat in 1896, but lost, and later toyed with running for mayor of Chicago. While he was involved in high-profile cases, such as defending the murderers Leopold and Loeb, he was also known as a champion of poor workers, blacks, and social and political outcasts against big business and corrupt officials, earning the nickname Lawyer for the Damned. Probably Darrow's most famous trial as defence lawyer was, of course, that of John Scopes in the Monkey Trial. A highlight of the trial, more to draw attention to the ludicrous nature of religious fundamentalism than as a relevant part of the actual case, was Darrow's calling prosecuting lawyer Brian to the stand, grilling him on his literal interpretations of the Bible. As expected, Scopes was found guilty and fined $100, but the verdict was later overturned on a technicality. Darrow retired from big cases not long after the trial, and Brian died just five days after his victory of a broken heart, according to one commentator. Under a different name, Darrow was portrayed in Inherit the Wind by Spencer Tracy, which brings us back to where we started. A good film, worth seeing, very speechifying, but interesting nonetheless. And that's What Goes Around from The Skeptic magazine, June 2014, Volume 34, Number 2, which, as I said, you can download along with virtually every other magazine we've ever published from our website, skeptics.com.au. Allora, ciao, io mi chiamo Professore Dave, io ti voglio insegnare tutte le cose sulla scienza. Parliamo di fisica, di chimica, biologia, astronomia, matematica e tante altre cose. Guardami su YouTube. Arrivederci. Hey everyone, this is Professor Dave. I want to teach you about all kinds of things regarding science. I want to tell you about physics. I want to tell you about chemistry, biology, astronomy, math, and many, many more things. Come check me out on YouTube. The channel is called Professor Dave Explains. Take it easy. He knows a lot about the science stuff. Professor Dave Explains. Now you're eavesdropping in, folks, on another prediction project. I'm with a screen full of skeptics. <laughs> Adrian, on last week's show, or the week before, no, I think it was last week, you had an encounter. No, it was the week before you had an encounter with the skeptical fairy godmother angel from the internet. You, you, uh, you took away to buy some maple syrup. But you were talking about the skeptic camp coming up. How did that go? It was a lot of fun, actually. We had good attendance and amazing speakers. One of them here today with us, Kelly Burke. She was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hi. I've heard lots of good. Hi, Kelly. I've heard lots of good things about your talk. What was it about? It was about guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia, and I actually got us a new editor. Yay! It was such a such such an informative talk, and it was so enthusiastic that although I've been a member since 2016, I wanted to sign up again. I wanted to wow. sign up again, too. She did a fabulous job. And that's the voice of Susan Gerbeck. How is guerrilla skepticism going, Susan? Oh, it is amazing. Um, I still need more editors. Please, please, please. But we've just hit 88 million page views. Wow. I know. I can't even believe it sometimes. I look at these numbers and I go, is that is that millions? Uh, I totally expect to hit 100 million by October. Well, sadly, I was asleep or drunk or I don't know what I was doing at the time and I missed the the event. Adrian, how can people check out the all the talks, including the one by Kelly? Well, it's on YouTube under Atheist Calgary. Mm-hmm. So just search Atheist Calgary and you should be able to find it. Or, and it's, this, it's a skeptic camp. Or, as we say, we'll put a link in the show notes. Oh, okay. Or we'll put a link in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> or you can put a link in the I show notes. I will put a link in the show notes. Folks who have spent the last two hours doing predictions, we thought we'd crack the big 200 to go mark. We didn't get quite that far because we kept getting sidetracked by basically Sorry. by basically Sorry. showing each other silly photographs and sky whales and all sorts of crazy stuff. But we, we got a few done. And today, out of all the ones we've marked, there were two that were correct. Two correct predictions. 
which isn't too bad. I mean, that's that's more or less par for the course. Anyway, once again, uh, to my group of skeptics in front of me on the little screen here, thank you. And uh, Adrian and Kelly, we'll certainly check out uh, the talks that were on Skeptic Camp. Should I, I guess I should send that link to you. Please, please do. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. And thanks for your support. And it showed up right away. Yeah, it does. It shows up right away. I'm Mick West. In my podcast, Tales from the Rabbit Hole, I've extended conversations with people who've been involved in conspiracy culture. I do this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because it's really interesting. These people have great stories about how they fell down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole, what they did down there, and what it was that helped them out. Sometimes I also talk to people who investigate conspiracy theories, and they have equally fascinating stories from the other side. Secondly, I want to understand how best to prevent the spread of conspiracy theories and misinformation, which is an increasing problem in a time when alternative media is exploding. The best way to do this is to communicate effectively with the people involved, and the best way to do that is with a nice long chat. Check it out. Tales from the Rabbit Hole. TFTRH.com into those digital archives at Trove at trove.nla.gov.au. Yes, and this week we are concentrating on Australian newspapers, reports, periodicals, magazines, journals, gazettes, and the rest. And following on from the Book of Tim, I thought we would look up in the Australian references stories relating to the Scopes Monkey Trial, as reported here in Australia. So come with me back to 1925. Now, the first entry we find, well, there are actually many, but uh, I've selected a few. This one comes from The Sun, Sydney, which was in production or published from 1910 to 1954, it appears. And we pick it up on July the 10th, 1925. Is there a God? Evolution trial issue. Preliminary argument. Sun special. Dayton, Tennessee, Thursday. The Scopes evolution trial was formally opened today. There was much confusion of the definition of the issues before Judge Ralston. W.J. Bryan, who is leading the, quote, fundamentalists, end quote, insists that the question to be decided is, quote, is there a God, end quote. Brian declared, if evolution be true, there is none. Unwilling to be crowded by Brian into this narrow corner, the defense is trying to make the contest one upon the legality of the Tennessee anti-evolution law, which John Scopes is alleged to have broken when he taught evolution to his class at the Dayton High School. And our next item comes to us from the Sunday Times in Perth, dated July the 12th, 1925. An unusual trial. Evolution versus Christianity. An important American prosecution of widespread interest. At Dayton, Tennessee, John Thomas Scope's evolution trial is in the first stage with the drafting of a new indictment assuring strict legality of the accusation and satisfying defence who expect the case to progress through the state Supreme Court on to the federal Supreme Court. They are maintaining that the issue is the determination whether educationalists should be compelled to conform to the tenets of any religion contrary to the Constitution. Mr. William Jennings Bryan, whose son has also joined the staff of the prosecuting attorneys, totaling nine, says that the issue is evolution versus Christianity. He declared that the trial was an uncovered attack which has been made covertly against Christianity 
for a generation. It will bring out information upon which a death grapple between evolution and Christianity will be decided. If evolution wins, Christianity goes, for the two cannot stand together. The selection of jurymen will proceed with great care, as the defence, if permitted, will present 50 scientific witnesses, prolonging the trial at least a month. The penalty for Scopes, if found guilty, is a fine of between $1 and $500. A curious mixture of spirits and carnival fanaticism has seized the town of Dayton. The circus and refreshment concessions have been rented by the town council, who use the proceedings to refurnish the courthouse, repair the clock tower, paint the benches, sweep the streets, and hire extra policemen to assist the town's solitary marshal to direct heavy traffic. Gay bunting covers the stores and residences in the town daytime, while coals glow at night under the beef-roasting concessions on the courthouse lawn. A hundred newspaper men and numerous photographers are present to give every happening countryside publicity. An army of evangelists from all parts of the United States are holding prayer meetings in the halls and open air by day and night in support of the prosecution, of which the following is a typical outburst. I tell you, they're nothing but a big bunch of anarchists, atheists and scoundrels who are trying to take our children to hell with them. Numerous roadway posters exhort passers-by to read the Bible and be saved, competing for attention with signs of local real estate people reading, quote, locate, build and prosper in Dayton, end quote. The indictment under which Scopes is tried charges him with having taught theories other than the story of the divine creator of man as taught in the Bible and that man ascended from the lower order of animals. And now we pick up the story as published in the Newcastle Sun on the 16th of July, 1925. No monkey business. The fence opened in Scope's trial. W.J. Bryan attacked. Counsel declares that evolution does not deny God. Interest continues unabated in the case in which the schoolteacher Scopes is charged with committing the offense of teaching the evolution theory. The objection by the defence admitted opponents of evolution theory opening the proceedings with prayer was overcome by allowing a clergyman who believed in evolution to make the invocation. The defence, in opening its case, contended that it was compatible to be a believer in the evolution theory and at the same time in the Bible. Up till today, the prayers at the opening of, quote, the monkey trial, end quote, have been delivered by fundamentalist preachers. But today, the defence had an innings when the Reverend Charles Potter, Unitarian pastor of New York who believes in evolution, made an invocation that contained no propaganda. The tempers of the judge and lawyers have been torn and tattered, owing to a big legal battle yesterday. The court quashed the motion moved yesterday by Mr. Darrow, for the defence, that the Tennessee law prohibiting the teaching of evolution theory was unconstitutional. Had the judge ruled otherwise, the trial would have ended instantly. As the forenoon progressed, the jury was called in from the courtyard where it had spent yesterday whittling sticks, while the legal arguments proceeded. Four students testified as to what Scopes had taught them about evolution and the case for the prosecution ended almost before the spectators realised it had begun. The defence then opened with its first witness, Professor Maynard Metcalf, who, like previous witnesses, was coatless and collarless, while a big policeman wheeled a palm-leaf fan in a futile endeavour to keep the judge cool. Mr. Malone, counsel with Mr. Darrow for the defence, tried to rid him of all the, quote, monkey business, end quote, in his first formal statement before calling witnesses. Our broad purpose, he said, will be to show that the Bible is a work of religion, which must be kept in the field of theology and not allowed to obtrude into the scientific field. We, as counsel for the defence, believe that God is a spirit 
and they who worship must worship in spirit and truth. The prosecution to succeed, he added, must prove that Scopes propounded a theory which was a denial of the story of the divine creation of man, as the Bible teaches, and instead taught that a man descended from the lower animals. We shall make it perfectly clear by the testimony of men learned in science and theology that millions of people who believe in evolution and who believe the stories of the creation set forth in the Bible find no conflict between the two. There may be a conflict between evolution and the peculiar ideas Mr. Bryan holds as the evangelical leader for the prosecution, but we deny that Mr. Bryan is an authorized spokesman for the Christians of America. The defense maintains that there are clear distinctions between God and the church, and Christianity and Mr. Bryan, added Mr. Malone. Twice during the trial, the prosecution has referred to man as descended from monkeys. That may be Mr. Bryan's understanding of evolution, but it is not our view. No scientist of any preeminence holds such a view. The most science says today is that one order of men, like mammals, is capable of walking erect and using their forefeet as hands, proceeded Mr. Malone. It would have been fascinating to be in that courtroom. And now we pick it up again from the Newcastle Sun, dated the 18th of July, 1925. Defense gets set back. Dayton monkey trial nears end. Contemptuous counsel. Judge will not permit scientists to give evidence. And parts of this are a little hard to read owing to the quality of the, uh, of the uh, reproduction, but we'll press on. The Scopes evolution trial is nearing its end. Judge Ralston today excluded the scientific testimony which the defense proposed to bring to disprove the allegation that the teaching of evolution was advocating the denial of God. He said that the law was clear that the teaching of evolution was a crime. Dayton, Tennessee, Friday. The Dayton court is called to order. A clergyman steps forward and everybody stands up. The bailiff commands and all obey, except Mr. Darrow, who, during the prayers, sits smoking and drinking red pop and reading his morning's mail. He wears a little blue button inscribed LLL. That means, quote, live and let live, end quote. This is the picture of each day's opening of the evolution trial that still claims the entire front pages of the American newspapers. Today, the court decided that the evolutionists could not call expert testimony from Darwin scientists to prove its contentions, so the end of the trial is in sight. I find, said Judge Ralston, that the intention of the legislature is absolutely plain. It prohibited the teaching in schools that man is descended from lower animals. I would have said ascended, not descended. And finally, we come to the Daily Standard, published in Brisbane, Queensland, dated Wednesday the 22nd of July, 1925. Scopes guilty. Fined $100 for law breach. Monkey trial ended. And once again, the, uh, the text is a little hard to read, but we'll do our best. Australian Cable Service, Vancouver, Tuesday. The school teacher Scopes, who was the central figure in the celebrated monkey trial, which took place at Dayton, Ohio last week, was found guilty of a breach of the law of the state for teaching evolution to school children. He was fined $100. It took the jury just seven minutes to come to its conclusion. The court immediately announced the fine and fixed Scopes' bail at $500 pending an appeal. Scores of persons offered Mr. Scopes sureties. The offer of the Baltimore Evening Sun was finally accepted. Then followed a great speech-making, and I think the word is journey, it's hard to see because it's a little unclear, in which the Attorney General and other luminaries congratulated Dayton on assuming her place in the sun as the scene of the Scopes trial. 
Your sons and sons' sons will meet here in years to come to commemorate the hearing of this famous case, said one lawyer. Mr. Bryan, again expressing deep sorrow that he was denied the privilege of grilling that arch-agnostic Mr. Darrow, said that more about the trial was cabled abroad than any other incident in American history. And I'll make a side comment saying, Indeed, I have found many references in the Australian archives. We read on. This case goes wider and deeper than any man can here, added Mr. Bryan impressively. Judge upsets Mr. Bryan. Judge Ralston, Attorney General, and I think the word is revered, but I'm not sure it's so faint and fuzzy, himself today and called off the verbal duel between... Mrs. Bryan and Darrow. Overnight consideration makes me certain that I was wrong in allowing examination by counsel of each other, said the judge, in ordering that Mr. Bryan's replies defending the Bible be expunged from the records. Mr. Bryan quickly protested that this decision prohibits him examining Mr. Darrow. The latter, however, appealed anxious to end the case and said, I suppose... All that remains now is to call in the jury and instruct them to bring in a verdict of guilty. Now, as I said, if you go to trove.nla.gov.au, not trovenla.com, as I think somebody once tried, nla.gov.au, uh, and you type in Scopes Monkey Trial or Monkey Trial, you will see many reports as reported here in Australia, about this famous trial. Now, next week on our Trove segment, we will be looking at uh, a new age. A new age and sceptics. Thank you for listening to The Skeptic Zone. Now I notice our friends at Canberra Skeptics at canberraskeptics.org are having more upcoming talks. Check them out at that address. And uh, if you're there, maybe you can go along. Coming up on The Skeptic Zone next week, we'll have a report from Mind Body Wallet. Yes, it's on again live for the public. That is, we can go and... Uh, mingle around the stalls of the new age and the woo and the interesting products to buy of course there are always interesting products at mind body wallet here in sydney a report coming up on next week's show i'll be doing that a little later on today and coming up very soon on the skeptic zone a special one-off episode probably in about a week probably after the next episode a report an interview and I'll tell you more next week by Aran Segev in his Grain of Salt segment. This is a rare special episode, a whole episode, an extra episode dedicated to uh, to one topic. That's just to whet your appetite. Haven't had Aran Segev's Grain of Salt on the show for a long time, so it'll be a real treat to have him back again. Thank you to those people who continue to support The Skeptic Zone at skepticzone.tv via Patreon or PayPal. And thank you to the new Patreons who've just signed on in the last couple of weeks. Very much appreciate your support. Without your support, of course, there would simply be no Skeptic Zone. So if you enjoy listening to the show every week, no matter what you're doing, walking the dog, doing the dishes, blah, 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 so on, you can thank those people who actually... Um, dip into their pockets and send the Skeptic Zone a little bit uh, of support via Patreon or PayPal. Some people do that for as little as $5 a month, which is just over $1 an episode. And I think that's a that's a bargain. But for this week, hmm, hmm, I better go and feed those cats, those Skeptic Zone cats, Henrietta and Maud. But for this week, this is Richard Saunders signing off from Sydney, Australia. You've been listening to the Skeptic Zone podcast. Please visit our website at www.skepticzone.tv for show notes, contacts, 
and to access the back catalogue of episodes going back to 2008. You can follow the Skeptic Zone podcast on Twitter at Skeptic Zone, visit our Facebook page, or leave a review on iTunes. You can also support the Skeptic Zone via Patreon or PayPal. The Skeptic Zone podcast is an independent production. The views and opinions expressed on the Skeptic Zone are not necessarily those of Australian skeptics or any other skeptical organisation. Hello to the people who keep listening for the dice game. Where's my... I always write these down because I get halfway through sometimes and I think, what was the first number? I'm going to roll this lovely D10 three times and there'll be a, a fourth roll as a sort of a extra number. I don't know why, but there you go. And you use your psychic <laughs> powers. Oh, <laughs> dumb luck. I'm going to use my dice rolling machine. So here we go. The first roll of the D10. So you can choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What will it be? Here it comes. 9. Did we have 9 last week? I don't remember. Anyway, 9 is the first number. Second number coming up. 3. Hmm. Will I roll a 5 for Susan Gerbic? Let's have a... Let's have a try here. Oh, it's a two. Oh, dear. Nine, three, and two. And I'll use... That was a purple die. I'm going to use this blue one now for the supplementary. Here it comes. Ten. Ooh. So today's numbers. Nine, three, and two. And the supplementary is ten. Who wants some breakfast? You want some breakfast? Hmm? What's this? Hmm? You want some breakfast? I bet you do. Okay, come on. Scoot. All right, there it is. Even skeptic. Zone cats have to eat.